How's it going guys? This is the 8.3 video. We are using this packet. We are on page number nine, pages nine through 10. Today's learning target is I can find missing angles. So last time we talked about missing sides. Now we're going to talk about missing angles in right triangles. This is only using right triangles using our trig function. So trig is still being used using our trig functions. Okay, now we're talking about angles. Basically the same thing, just a little bit different. All right, as always, this is our rules. If you need a review of this, I would watch the last two videos. This is so Katoa, so just as a review, this is sine opposite over hypotenuse. This is so this is cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. Okay, those are our different rules. If you need a refresher, I would watch the last two videos. Uh, real quick, if I was trying to find sine of A, for example, this would be opposite hypotenuse adjacent. O over H would be sine, so it'd be four over five. Okay, I'm not going to spend a ton of time going over those because I think the other videos will explain that. Let's take a look at actually what we're learning today. So this right here, inverse sine, we need to find angle F. So in this situation, we are trying to find angle F. Okay, we're going to stick with the same strategy we've been doing. Okay, if this is my angle, this is my reference angle, I need to first label my picture. So let's do that real quick. This would be opposite. Across from the right angle would be hypotenuse. This would be adjacent. If you are struggling with that, go back to the other videos and make sure you feel good about that because you should be able to label your picture pretty easily. Okay, angle F is my reference angle. Now, using what we did last time, we need to pick our trig function, okay? A is blank, so we're left with O and H, so that's gonna be sine. We're gonna be left with sine of my angle, which is angle F, equals O, which is 10, over H, which is 23, okay? Now you're probably asking yourself, oh my gosh, this is weird, okay? I no longer, if I type this in the calculator, I no longer have, I, I can't do sine of like F. Oh no, well, this is what happens. Anytime you are trying to find the angle now, you're gonna use this thing called inverse sine and inverse cosine and inverse tangent. Basically, it is sine, S-I-N, with a little negative one as your exponent. Kind of weird. Don't worry about it too much. But this is called inverse sine. That's what that's called. So here's how it works. Angle F is now going to go right here. And this is now going to have an inverse sine in front of it. Inverse sine 10 over 23. Okay, now we can put that in the calculator. So you may have noticed in the past, when we type this in, we're gonna get trig inverse sine of 10 divided by 23. That's our answer. Angle F equals 25.7715. Let's simplify that. Uh, angle F would be equal 25.8. Eight is what I'm going to do, 25.8 degrees. That seven is going to make it round to eight. Okay, not too bad too far, too far. Let's try this next one. We're going to skip these because this is what we did in the last unit or the last lesson. All right, so this triangle, I'm still trying to find angle F. So this is my reference angle. Let's label it real quick. This would be opposite. Across from the right angle would be my hypotenuse. This would be adjacent. Now you can probably tell we're going to use cosine, but let's make sure we know how to find it. If we cover up O, because this is the blank side, we're going to end up using A and H. So we're going to have 
cosine of angle F equals A over H. So C, A over H. A is 15 over H, which is 32. Okay, again, we have the same situation. So in order to find the angle, we need to do inverse cosine of 15 over 32 inside the parentheses. Let's see what we get when we plug that in. Go to trig. Inverse cosine, 15 over 32. I would get 62.0468. Angle F would equal 62.0 degrees. Remember to always round to the nearest tenth. Okay. How about this next one? This is now going to be tangent. Same situation. We're also finding angle F. Okay. What is opposite angle F? It is this number right here, 6. What is across from the right angle? This is my hypotenuse. This is adjacent. O and A are what we're using because H is worthless. So we need to use these. So we're going to have TOA. This is tangent. Tangent of angle F is going to equal O over A. O over A is 6 over 25. Okay, again, I'm using O and A, so I'm using tangent. All right, this is going to give me angle F is going to equal inverse tangent of 6 over 25. Let's see what that becomes. Hopefully you're kind of seeing the routine. It's not too bad. Inverse tangent 6 over 25. Angle F equals 13.4957. Angle F equals 13.5 degrees is what you're going to get. All right, so that's kind of the basic strategy. Let's look at a few more examples. Hopefully that's clicking for you. As said before, if you know two sides of the triangle, you can find the angle by using the inverse that we've been talking about. So you use the inverse function with the negative one, sine, inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent, to find the indicated angle. All right. So looking at these pictures, they always give us one of the angles as a variable. That's going to be our reference angle. So if we're trying to find x, opposite x is going to be 51. The right angle is going to be hypotenuse, and this is adjacent. If you don't know how to label that, maybe pause the video and make sure you're okay with this. This is opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Now we need to figure out which one we're going to use. So let's remind ourselves this is so ka toa. That's what we're using. So Katoa. So which of these sides is completely blank? Doesn't have any numbers on it. H. So we're left with O and A. So we're going to use Toa. Toa. You're going to have tangent of the X degrees equals O over A. 51 over 23. That's going to create X is going up to the front and we're going to have inverse tangent. 51 over 23. Let's see what that becomes. Inverse tangent, 51 divided by 23. 65.7256. X equals 65.7 degrees. 65.7 degrees. And you're just kind of just going to do that process over and over. So if I were you guys, I would maybe pause the video right now. Maybe try number five on your own. See how you do, and then check your work, what I'm about to do. All right, here's my angle. Opposite Y is O. Across from the right angle is H. This is A. What I have is O and H. So I'm going to use so. I'm going to use sine. I'm going to have sine of my angle, which is Y equals O, which is 43 over 48. Y is going to equal inverse sine of 43 over 48. Y equals inverse sine 43 divided by 48, 63.6157. Okay, that would reduce to 63.6 degrees. Okay, guys, hopefully you're seeing the rhythm here. 
It's really not too bad. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. So if you're good, you might just stop the video. It's pretty much it. But let me do a few more examples. This is angle C. This is opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Okay, now which one of these is blank? O is blank. So I have A and H, which is going to give me cosine. So I'm going to have cosine of C equals A over H, 30 over 35. That's going to give me C equals inverse cosine of 30 over 35. Let's see what we get when we get that. Inverse cosine of 30 over 35 would give me 31.0027. C is going to equal 31.0 degrees. Notice how in all my answer choices, I am rounding to the nearest tenth, and I am putting it in degrees because I'm getting angles. All right, what about number seven? I'm finding x. I'd have zero. I mean, excuse me, opposite. Hypotenuse adjacent. What do I have? I have a and h. So I'm using cosine. Cosine of x equals a over h, 16 over 25. x comes out. I have inverse cosine, 16 over 25. That order does not change. Let's see what we get here. Cosine 16 of 25. 50.2082. X equals 50.2 degrees. 50.2 degrees. Okay. What about this one? Angle A. This is opposite. This is hypotenuse, and this is adjacent. Again, same situation. We have A and H. We're trying to find angle A. So we're going to use cosine. Cosine of A equals A over H, which is 12 over 20. 12 over 20. We get A equals inverse cosine of 12 over 20. Let's see what we get when we put that in the calculator. Inverse cosine of 12 over 20. We get 53.1301. If you're a little bit iffy on rounding, let's remind ourselves of that real quick. One is the number we're looking at. Three is directly after it. Three is still less than five, so I'm going to stick with it. 53.1 degrees. If that number after one would have been five or greater, this would have become 53.2 degrees, but that's not the case. What about this one? Angle B. This would be opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Cross that out, we're left with O and A. If you look at SOHCAHTOA, this is TOA. So tangent of my angle, which is angle B, equals O over A. So 4 over 7. Angle B is going to equal inverse tangent of 4 over 7. Let's see what we get when we get that. Angle B is going to equal inverse tangent 4 over 7. 29.7449. Again, we don't really round here, so angle B equals 29.7 degrees. Hopefully you guys feel good about that, guys. It's really a pretty quick lesson. Uh, you probably understood it maybe just after two or three examples, but that's what we're doing. So go ahead and work on the practice, pages 11 and 12. Have a great day.